This week I'll show you how to make actions in Photoshop. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace, where you will learn innovative techniques on shooting a wide range of photography. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to Exploring Photography. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we're gonna do something a little bit off the beaten path that we've done in the past. We're gonna jump into Photoshop and I'm gonna answer a question a lot of people have been sending to me on my Facebook page, and that is, uh, what are Photoshop actions? How do you create them? How do you use them? Because it seems like it's this really difficult thing to do. Well, basically, Photoshop actions were created a long time ago. As long as I can remember, Photoshop actions have been in Photoshop. And really what they're for is to automate anything that you do over and over and over. And uh, the good news is they're really easy to create. Even really complex actions are really easy to create. It's just like using a tape recorder, basically. You hit record, you do your stuff, and you hit stop, and it's done. And so we're going to build a really, really uh, simple action and show you how you can use that to add options and dialog boxes and stuff. You'll see it's really, really simple. And then you can use those techniques to create tons of actions on your own. And it's a huge time-saving device. So let's take a closer look at Photoshop actions. All right, let's look at how easy it is to create an action in Photoshop. Now, the nice thing is actions can do almost anything. So we're going to create a very simple action so you can understand the principles. And then you can go from there to do almost anything conceivable. So let's first see what our action looks like. So this little uh, arrow right here is in the actions palette that opens this up. Now, one of the things I, I need to mention is actions have been around for as long as Photoshop has been around. So it doesn't really matter which version of Photoshop you have you're going to be able to create and use actions. Now, actions are already built into Photoshop. You'll see that there are some default actions there, and you can play with those on your own images to see exactly what they do. We're going to create a, a one that's called the white photo border. So let me show you what it does. Um, so I'm going to hide this really quickly and explain to you what I have. I have three images, three layers, on top of a gray background. So uh, there's one, two, three images. And what I want to do is I want to make sort of a collage here so I can maybe select this one, use my free transform tool. I'll make this uh, tilted to bring it in just a little bit. I'll take that one. I'll take the second layer here. I'll uh, tilt that one again a little bit. Maybe bring it over like this. Put it on top of the other one so it looks like uh, we have sort of this little bit of a, a pile of images on each other. Right now you can't really tell that these are stacked. So we need to give them a little bit of mojo. So to do that, I've created an action. I'll go into my actions palette. I'll click on this white photo border and hit play. Bammo! Immediately I have a white border around this plus a drop shadow. I'll go to the next layer, hit that, go to the next layer, hit that. And now, all of a sudden, I have something that's a little bit more usable. And then I can start playing with these, moving them around and creating sort of that look that I want. So how did we do that? Well, let me show you. So what I'll do here is I'm going to undo everything I've done. We'll start back with our three layers, and we're going to create this action from scratch. It's a very simple action. Here's how you do it. So the very first thing is you need to open the actions palette. And so once we have that, we're going to go down here, and we have this little icon. It sort of looks like the create new layer icon, but it's for creating a new action. So we'll start there. I'll create a new action, and I'm going to name this. I'm going to call it... Uh, the big white photo border and we can create that inside the marks action set and you can create different action sets here by creating new folders it's really easy you can also assign function keys so if you do something a lot like creating a copy of the background layer or resizing images for a blog something like that well instead of going to the actions layer you can actually assign a function key to this and so you then hit that and bammo that will play well i don't want to do that you can also color code these, so just for fun, we will uh, add a blue color code to that, and you'll see exactly what it does. Once you've done that, then you can hit record, and now we're recording. So what we can do here is it's only going to record the stuff that matters, and so we could take all day moving the mouse around. It's not going to record any of that. It's only going to record the things that really matter. Let me show you what I mean here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this palette here. It's not going to record that because it doesn't matter. And uh, the next thing I'll do is I'm going to select the image on my layer. So I'll hit Command and I'll click on this layer. And it's just going to select uh, the image inside of this transparent layer here. So we get that. Then we will 
put a stroke around this of white. Well, what if I've forgotten where that command is? Well, I can go and I can explore this and look around, and that is not being recorded by my, uh, my action right now. I could even go to the Help menu. I could type in stroke to find out where that is. Oh, it's right here. Click that. And so none of that's recorded, so that's the good news. You can do all kinds of things, um, and it only records the, the things that matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this stroke a 15-pixel stroke. It's going to be a big border, and we'll make it white. So that's the color. Make it white. And I want this to be on the outside of my selection. And then everything else we're going to leave the default. So I'll hit OK. Now we have that big, huge border around there. And then the next thing I will do is I'm going to go and I'm going to add, actually I need to deselect this, so I'll deselect that. And then I'm going to add an effect. I'm going to add a drop shadow. So I'll go in here, I'll add this drop shadow, and we'll make the distance a little bit more because this is a big version of what we just did. And I'll say OK. And that's it. So then I'm going to go into my actions palette and I'm going to hit stop. And now we have an action. Now check this out. Let's test and see if it works. We'll go to this layer over here. We will tilt this a little bit, pour it in, maybe about like that. And we'll click big white border. Boom, there it is. We'll get this guy. Boom, there it is. And now we have sort of this postery looking postcard effect. And it's there forever. Anytime we want to duplicate this look, we just go into our actions palette and click a button and it's all good. Well, what if we wanted to have some options for things like how wide that border is? Because this looks a little too wide to me. Could we do that? Hmm. Well, we can. And let me show you how we do that. So what I'll do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to undo all of that stuff using my history palette. But notice that uh, after I've undone all of that stuff, I still have my big white photo border. So it's not gonna undo all the recording stuff that we just did. Just going to undo this stuff that we did while we were recording. It's sort of nice. So what we can do here is we can expand this. And we have these little boxes next to all of these different steps. And so you can see exactly what this action recorded. So it recorded setting the selection when I did that. It recorded setting the stroke, undoing the selection, setting that drop shadow. And it even shows the different uh, settings that we had in each one. But what if we wanted to have the option to change the size of the stroke in this action? Now think about this in a different way. What if you had something that you did over and over, but each time you did it, you did it a little bit differently, like resizing an image or saving it to a location. So the actions are the same, but what they do inside of those, that workflow basically is different. You can just click this little box right here. And what that's saying is when it gets to this point, open up the dialog box, and let me choose those settings instead of using the ones that we typed in when we actually recorded the action. So let me show you that one more time. So remember, we had a stroke width of 15. Let's see if we want to have a stroke width of, let's say, 3. So I'll say play. We're going to do this on this bottom layer here. And look, it goes all the way until it hits this, and then it waits for me. So I'm going to say I want to have a 3-pixel border. Okay. Boom, and then it just finishes. And so what you can do then, let's say we want this one to have an eight pixel border. I'll hit play, it allows me to choose the size. Boom, that's a little bit bigger. And then this one up here, let's say we want to have a one pixel. You get the idea, and it allows us to do that. Or if we wanted to change the size of the drop shadow, we could just click this little dialog box here. And so when we played that, it would go until it came up to that layer style. You get the idea. It allows you to do all kinds of things inside of that action. And once you get a handle of creating actions, then you can do all types of things. So I have some things, uh, for example, when I want to save something to my blog. So I've got this blog featured image. So it resizes it, it exports it, it closes it. There's all kinds of things that you can do. So anything you do over and over, basically record that in an action and then you don't have to do all the steps. You can just click a button and it's taken care of. Photoshop Actions rock, as you can see. One more thing I need to tell you, and that is subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you do, it'll make me happy. All right, I'll see you next time right here on Adorama TV.
We could just do an Aquaman kind of thing. Aquaman, Aquaman does everything Aqua can. <laughs> Wait, that's Spider-Man, right? Well, I do look like Aquaman, except for... Is, well, Aquaman was orange, though, right? Yeah, orange and blue. I'm blue Aquaman. Wait, what is it? Blackwoman. I'm Blackwoman. Blackwoman, Blackwoman. No, there's there's got to be, I'm going to YouTube the theme song to Aquaman. All right, right here. Want to get the most out of your Adorama photography equipment? Visit our learning center where you can read popular articles, how-to tips, buying guides, and product reviews.